So we always talk about not judging a book by its cover, but that's exactly what I do in my work. Um, I, at least I judge books by their covers, I judge them by their size, I judge them by their shape, I judge them by the type that's in them, um, I judge them by the way they present themselves or make themselves present to the reader in lots of different ways. It's a fascinating field of study, it gets called um, various different things, sometimes the history of the book, sometimes the sociology of texts, sometimes just the study of the material text, uh, or memorably by one critic, the new boredom. Uh, but it's certainly about thinking about how books actually work on their readers. So we like to think sometimes of texts as things that circulate free from any kind of physical constraint that are there in our minds um, and in our thoughts. But really what happens is that when we look at a book, it starts to work on us and it already gives us various different messages about what we're reading and how we're accessing it. So I'm really interested in thinking about how a cover might shape your experience of a book or how a title might change how you're reading, even how something like a dedication or chapter titles might make you think differently about the works you're encountering or a, 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 the, how a book is um, set on the page, so how the typeface is put together or whether it's in columns or the quality of paper, all of those might give you cues about what a book is and how it's trying to get you to read. And one of the things I'm really interested in doing too is thinking about how books were presented to their earliest readers. So when we look at Shakespeare today, we either look at stripped down play texts or we look at critical editions where you have the play at the top of the page in a narrow ribbon and then page after page of dense footnotes kind of guiding you through the text. But that's nothing like what an early reader would have seen. So what I like to think about is how a play would have presented itself to its first readers or how another text would have been there for the people who encountered it in its first incarnation and how that might make us think differently about what it is that we're reading and how it's received. I'm interested as well in what we might think about as the social life of books. So the idea that books are objects that people use in different ways. Sometimes we read them, sometimes we might use them for decoration or for making ourselves look um, as though we're particularly knowledgeable or particularly um, interested in particular in certain topics. Um, people think about how they arrange their books or how they're put around in space to, to give certain messages about the reader. It was the novelist Anthony Powell who said, uh, books do furnish a room. Um, and so I'm interested as well in the ways in which books are used to present people to each other and people use books to mediate themselves and to think about who they are. And I'm interested in histories of reading, how earlier generations found books and thought about them and thought with them. So I look for annotations and marginalia. Again, we're not supposed to write in our books, but it's wonderful to find traces of people in the past who have um, and to see their acts of reading come alive and to think about what's happened um, on the page. And all of that goes into my writing. So it's hard to think about how we might write about the physical text, but actually we can start to speculate about what a book says to its readers how it asks to be interpreted and we can also write about how a book has been read and received and circulated and how it's been used as a good between friends or between enemies or between lovers or between uh, various different people that sense that it itself is something that goes out into the world and makes social engagements of different kinds happen.